quality work cannot be made within six months. You have to hook me from the first book or else I won't read your second book or anything else you put out. That is concerning to me. What's up guys? My name is Lou and these are my books. Today we're making a video about a subject that's actually very interesting that I honestly have been thinking about because I've always said this that authors nowadays feel like they're being mass produced but I actually found an article that talks about this and it is titled specifically mass marketed is not mass produced how the myth of hyper productive author authors hid the existence of plagiarizing book mills and this is an article from specifically the medium and i will obviously link it down below if you guys want to read it i really recommend that you do because it's very interesting but i just have like a few excerpts that i really want to go into but first off i'm going to talk about my personal like observations uh, within like mass produced authors in my opinion because I've always said this where it's like authors putting out books like bam 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 um like the book of tea the the book of tea duology those books came out within like four months of each other I think um fourth wing and iron flame those books came out within six months of each other and Rebecca and um Rebecca Yados has made it very clear that she intends to put out uh her books within six months of each other all of them even though technically she hasn't even started writing the third book in the series but still that's still my point is quality work cannot be made within six months especially if you're writing very long books and Rebecca Otto's books they are really long I don't know how long Iron Flame is uh, I'll put the number here once I google it but like seriously there is nothing for me to say other than like quality work cannot be done in six months because six months is like the minimum period to even write a first draft like in my opinion to write a decent looking first draft um of your entire story and first drafts aren't even meant to be like the full thing they're meant to just be like get all your ideas down on paper get everything you want to happen down on paper it doesn't have to make sense however it just needs to be on paper so you know where you're going with it and she's writing an entire edited work in six months like you're joking you're joking that doesn't feel right but still i personally i have no like qualms with people who want to go bam 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 especially if they've been writing these books for a decent long, long time but it's like the thing about it it becomes a problem at least in my opinion it becomes a big problem when you're writing these books and it's obviously not your best work it was obviously a rush job and that's the case with Iron Flame. I remember talking about it on my channel, but um, if you don't remember, I personally didn't read Iron Flame. However, what I did do was I waited about four months or so uh, after Iron Flame's release to actually start looking into the drama surrounding it. And oh boy, it was, it, it was wild. <laughs> It was an absolute fucking PR disaster. The whole thing was an absolute mess. That's like literally all I can really say about it. And I honestly found it completely hilarious. Not gonna lie to you. So I'm, I have some points here and then we're also going to talk a little bit about the article. I have some excerpts and whatnot that I want to go through with you. So let's get started with talking about this whole thing. Um, I have some parts from the uh, article that I'm going to read. Most of my points uh, co do coincide to certain parts of this article, so I will be going through them with you guys. Um, so first off, e-publishing is a large part of why author output is so high. So I'm pretty sure we've all noticed that authors typically tend to put out bam 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 books, but not in traditionally published form. However, they do do it on ebook platforms like Kindle Unlimited, which is why there's currently such a stigma around Kindle Unlimited. I'll do another video on that if you guys really want me to. But it's essentially created from this idea that um, an author can only get famous through either mass marketing or mass publishing their books. And publishing as many books as is possible in the hope that one of them gets famous or in this case goes viral. Um, 
and specifically this coincides with a certain part in the article here. In recent years, authors have gotten used to hearing that the best way to get sales is to release as many books as possible in quick succession. In the past, authors were given the advice that the best thing you can do after finishing a book is to start another one, and this always made sense to me. But somewhere during the past five or so years, that has transformed into you must write and release as many books as possible as quickly as possible if you want to make a living and game the Amazon and game the Amazon algorithm. In short, according to this new mentality, the only way contemporary any contemporary author can succeed is by mass producing books. I'm sure authors have tried to increase their output since the first clay tablet was invented, but as someone who has written full time for years and who works damn hard at reaching what I consider to be tough writing goals, despite whatever chaos is going down in my life, and anyone who knows me will tell you that my life is the antithesis, is the antithesis is the antithesis of uneventful, I couldn't understand how many authors were suddenly able to achieve such high output. Discounting the Noah Robertses who, out there who were naturally prolific, I figured that people had discovered some course or productivity secret that I and my writing friends hadn't. Before I forget, this author is from the perspective of an actual writer. Um, her name is Georgie Georgina Penny if you guys want to look her up. I personally didn't but mainly I'm just more concerned with this with this uh, article. But the thing is, she's actually completely correct within this. A lot of authors right now have the instinct to just put out one book after the other without a thought to quality. And that's why I'm so picky about writing styles. That is so why I'm so fucking picky about how a story is presented to me. Because if you're writing books that are meant to be series or like uh, continuations, you have to hook me from the first book or else I won't read your second book or anything else you put out. <sighs> it's annoying. It's really, really fucking annoying. Not gonna lie to you. And personally, as a writer myself, like putting out fully fledged novels in less than six months feels inconceivable it feels ridiculous to me because it's like where are you getting this time where are you getting like all of this like power brain power to just sit there and write for like six months straight and then go straight into the editing and like publishing process. How are you doing that? Because I personally have ne like in my years of writing, I've been writing since I was in sixth grade. And that is a long ass time. Um, considering the fact that I was like maybe like 12 or 13 at that point, And now I'm 19. Where are you getting that time? I've never even written a full story to its completion. Where? How? Why? I... I don't get it. I don't understand. And honestly, I was kind of surprised myself at first. I was literally like, are people just like uh, covertly writing their books and then officially taking them to publishers or whatnot? Because that part would make sense. If you're um, looking to get your book uh, scouted by a publisher, you would go to them and like pitch your book and they would take it on or not, uh, depending on how, but depending on how well they think it'll sell, you know, all of that. No author goes to a publishing company without a plan, you know, no, no one does that. But and no publishing company is going to take you on without like you having at least like two or three books in the works, you know, that's not that I like, I don't think like that would be bad business for everybody involved. But seriously, like six months for two books feels inconceivable to me. Um, and in the particular, I'm mentioning Rebecca Yados because she has publicly said this. Um, she wants to put out, put out all of her books within six months of each other. That is concerning to me, especially since she hasn't even started writing the third book in like in the, in the fourth wing series. And that's supposed to be like five or six books, I think. I don't even know, man. And so what this author goes into is something that actually I never really thought of, which is something called plagiarism mills. I never knew about this, but authors attempting to increase output through the use of plagiarism mills. As creators, we're usually never completely switched off. If there's anyone out there who's con who has achieved this great feat, please let me know how. 
the well we pull from is the well we pull from to get those words onto the on the page comes from inside us and we're feeling whatever we're writing ask anyone who's written a scene with a character being sad or dying and ask if they were crying when they wrote it i guarantee you a significant number of people will say yes our job is hard uh, our job is hard emotional work that we largely do on our own or in small collaborations and then send it out to the world to be consumed and judge that's hard and awesome in equal measures writing emotional comedy as i do emotional romantic comedy as i do i've come to see i've come to see that genre fiction any genre fiction comes with a particular set of challenges genre fiction writers have to go through all the hardship like hardship life throws at them in addition to making room for the good stuff too and then channel all that into a satisfying read that leaves their readers feeling good at the end <clears throat> To write the emotional roller coaster that comes with a uh, good writing with writing good genre fiction we authors have to be on that roller coaster with our characters and i frequently wondered how this new breed of super prolific author was managing to take this ride so many times in a year without collapsing to a burnt pile of cinders and then when the news of, when the news of the copy paste scandal with the news of the copy paste scandal i realized they weren't on that roller coaster at all and not many may even may even be aware of its existence these people running book mills are just a game are just gaming a system set up to be gamed they're perfect they're ridiculous they're paying ridiculously low amounts to people to produce books that they don't have any emotional ties with bad reviews critiquing their characters settings or plot that wouldn't really touch them and they didn't write the work the bad sales of a book wouldn't make them feel like that wouldn't make them feel like the time, energy, and emotion they channeled into a, into that book for nothing. It'd just be a glitch in the business. Maybe a signal that a particular ghostwriter wasn't a good money spinner. And that really hit me when I listened to this. I was really like, wow, never thought about that. Because we know about ghostwriters. Like ghostwriters, they do, ghostwriters are people, are people like others hire to write books for them or write their ideas for them because like they're not physically capable or they just can't do it or blah, 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 whatever. In this context, people paying, paying other people to create work that they have no emotional ties to from someone else's idea um, and then just putting it out and calling it a glitch in the business when it doesn't do well because, you know, obviously it's mass produced fake work that nobody cares about. Like not even the person who wrote it cares about it at all. And the author obviously doesn't care about it either because they didn't write it. It's not their baby. There's a lot going into this. There, there's a lot. Writing, yes, is a very emotional process. I personally, the way I write is like... Like, I hate writing the in-between bits. I hate writing the filler between the major plot points. So what I started doing recently was I started, like, putting all of my major plot points into a different document, writing them out, like, in the way I think they're supposed to happen in my head. And then I go back over them with a fine-tooth comb if I really want to. And then as I write the original story, uh, I can bring those back into the... I can, I can take those little excerpts plug them into my story and then f fiddle around with the wording and rewording and whatnot to make it fit that's how I do things but like um it's an emotional process like writing emotionally charged scenes is like is heavy for me it is a lot <laughs> so much it is so much work to just be writing such emotionally heavy scenes um like all the time and that's most of what I write um if you guys ever want to see what I write or like read what I write um like let me know in the comments or something I don't know but emotionally charged writing is not easy to write it is absolutely not it is horrific horrible um it's fun and being a writer is also very lonely but the thing is I typically write to regulate my anxiety um so I've been doing a lot of it since I started college. But still, my point remains, writing is a very emotional process. And just foisting that off onto someone who doesn't care about anything other than the money they're going to be paid just is not a good combination for writing a bestseller. It's just one of those things that's just like, no, 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 no. And specifically, this 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 author specifically says, here's an excerpt. Real writing is far from the romanticized Real writing is far from the romanticized idea of a, of an off, of the author being able to write for an hour a day while reclining on a chaise lounge and patting a poodle. Although that would be very nice. <laughs> yes. Being an author means quote, doing the fucking work.
getting the words down no matter what's going on in your life and then taking care of business marketing let's not forget the day job many of us need to in order to survive financially oh and then we actually got to live so we've got material to put into new books creativity doesn't happen in a vacuum far from it yes and creativity does not happen in a vacuum like authors get ideas from other places authors get ideas from other authors authors just bounce ideas off of each other i have a lot of i have a couple of author friends that i bounce ideas off of like all of the damn time and it's really nice to just like be bouncing ideas off of other people's heads because you're not just so stuck in your own little world uh because writing is very isolating it's a very interesting kind of hobby to be part of so let's talk about the fact that something that contributed a lot to um the rise of plagiarism mills um includes the rise of e-publishing because e-publishing is essentially you don't have to be with a publishing company to publish a book at that point you just kind of need to really go to the company and just say here put this book out, out for sale or whatnot and yeah whatever i've never really looked into the process because i've never really wanted to do it but yes essentially any author can essentially just e-publish their book if they really wanted to um and with this a lot of traditionally published authors actually go um to uh publish their books under indie names or just indie publish their books like self-publish their books that are not contracted like just to like have them quickly publish because publishing traditional publishing is a long ass process it is it is a long ass process it is it is very long very very long um with like the editing and the marketing and the creation of like the and creation of covers and blah 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 and, and printing and all of that it's a very long process so a lot of a lot of traditionally published authors will publish indie releases um to get those books out quickly because they were just books that they had on the back burner that they weren't going to be contracted by their publishing company blah 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 you know all of that but in that mix, uh, in that mix, traditionally published authors always have a better reputation than indie authors do. So people seeing uh, traditionally published authors going out and like uh, publishing these self publishing these books back to back to back very quickly um, pulls indie authors into the whirlpool where people expect indie authors to have the exact same output, which contributes to the plagiarism mills um and essentially essential and essentially indie authors are now expected to put out quality work in very quick succession like traditionally published authors have done so that brings to us to this excerpt so we now have increased increased reader expectations under the illusion that quality fiction can be produced at a fast pace this makes it very hard for new authors to get started to build their brand up and running uh to make a living never mind maintaining sanity through a super tough industry it's no wonder real authors including myself were buying into the if i just produce more books i'll sell more and make more money idea when you're madly paddling to keep your head above water you don't have time to analyze what's causing the waves and that's the thing and continuing on with that but the flood of quality books onto ebook markets came with it and increased their expectation that they could get lots of books from their favorite authors now it was an illusion of mass production caused by the adaptation of new of a new technology that illusion helped hid from readers the amount of hard work that went into every one of the books they were consuming like the delicious brain candy and emotional crack they were i certainly know that as a reader i've been spoiled over the past decade i've caught myself feeling almost sulky at the end of it end of reading an author's catalog wondering why the hell they couldn't just magic me up another book to read so i can get one more fix and i know how much work goes into creating good fiction that's the thing that is the thing finding a good book finding a an author you really vibe with finding an author that writes uh stuff that hits all of your buttons is an amazing thing but you but the agonizing wait um for like their next release is always so tough but when but in this market right now people releasing off releasing books back to back with authors that come out of fucking nowhere really just makes you think huh where the fuck did you come from or hey this is cool maybe i'll read this things and your expectations are kind of lowered for quality in that kind of thing 
because a lot of traditionally published authors do have amazing writing styles because they've been developing them for years. Let me give an example. Uh, Sarah J. Mass, she's been around for I think almost two decades at this point. I'm not completely sure. She started writing when she was 16. Throne of Glass came out. She published it when she was 16 with Bloomsbury, right? Right? And now, and she is such a prolific author right now that she's not being pulled into this mass marketing, mass produced whirlpool because she is just writing as she sees fit because she has enough of a solid fan base that she can just do this and people will buy her books regardless because of, you know, the hype. Uh, Saba Tahir, she hasn't come out with a new book since All My Rage, I believe. And um, in June, somewhere, I don't know when, when this is coming out, um, I forget. It's coming out this year, but I don't remember when. Uh, she's coming out with her new book, Air, which is a, f uh, which is a, which is another fantasy. And, um, she hasn't put out a fantasy since the An Ember and the Ashes trilogy. And that trilogy, Quartet, right? Um, let's see. Um, R.F. Kuang. She got really famous for the Poppy War trilogy, and then she started putting out Babel, and then she put out Yellowface. But she got really famous fucking popular because a she has an amazing writing style b she she fucking better because she grew she because she went to fucking oxford for this um she has an amazing writing style and she has an amazing world she does amazing at world building too so like prolific authors they don't technically have to be within this they just have to be an exceptional kind of author to be able to put out this kind of stuff sarah j mass is an exception because she started off where um she didn't well I'm not saying that her writing style that her like work isn't great she does make great work however she got popular at a time where ebooks and e-marketing and all of this self-publishing bs uh wasn't mainstream so she was so essentially she was forced to build up her fan base from scratch all of this essentially contributes to the fact that a lot of like our traditional authors most of them are really well marketed um sarah j mass is a really good example of that um she got she started off all of her stuff started off ya and then it moved slowly into the adult category um after a bit and from there she just kind of is just taking it all in stride really it's honestly kind of fascinating watching um seeing like mass seeing authors just pop out of nowhere really where it's just like they come out with these really pretty books and you're just like what the hell is that um and then you read it and like either you are amazed by how good it is or you're underwhelmed by its quality and it's one of those two things but here's something that I think has happened. People's expectations of uh, new authors have been lowered. That's what I think. Because people don't expect debut books to be that, to be like amazing works of art, right? I, I certainly don't expect that. However, I do expect it to be decent enough to catch your attention, you know? That's like the bare minimum. But a lot of people aren't expecting debut authors to be like amazing at writing or have developed their complete writing style just yet. People aren't expecting that. But I think a lot of people are blowing things out of proportion, really, because Fourth Wing was not good. I, 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 I think we can all agree. Fourth Wing was not good. Iron Flame was probably worse. I have not read it. I will not be reading it. Iron Flame was probably worse. But my thing about this entire thing, my thing about it all, is that there's kind of no other way to really say this, but um authors being mass produced is not the same as them being mass marketed because um authors um simply putting out books like complete putting out books like a fucking mill um is enti is an entirely different thing rather than uh publishing companies and authors marketing their books like hell Alex Astor specifically she marketed her book so hard on TikTok it was not good however her book on TikTok, her book went viral on TikTok and everyone bought it and everyone was like, oh my God, it's so good because she marketed it so well. She was appealing to the trends of the times. However, mass produced authors such as Rebecca Yados, she's been writing romance books uh, like on Kindle for years, 
I think for pretty much years and then she came out with a fantasy book that suddenly went absolutely viral and she fell into the trap of hey let me put out as many books as possible because she wrote uh romance books which romance books have been very popular for many many years but then she wrote a romanticy that went even more viral because it reminded everybody of like Divergent and the Hunger Games or whatnot it gave me none of those vibes personally it was just trash uh but that's my opinion it's my opinion but still i like i understand why she went viral because that's just that's just how it worked really rebecca yados was pretty much an established author she already kind of kind of had a fan base and it was established that she was writing romance so like obviously people were expecting it to be oh it's going to be nice it's going to be a good kind of introductory fantasy you know that and people that's what people have been calling fourth wing people have been calling fourth wing an introductory fantasy and i would not give it that generous of a title but you know what whatever floats your boat I guess what I'm trying to say here is that a lot of what's going on right now with authors and their choices um, to like either to like put out as many books as possible and market them like hell uh, come from a personal preference slash a pressure from their publishing companies if they are under one. Being an author is a tough job. Being an author is a hard isolating job. You would never think that being an author would be so difficult if you were never an author yourself. And as someone who writes not for like, not for profit, not for a living, I do it for fun. I can already say I feel part of that pain because like making sure that what you're writing is your best work, no matter if it's going to be seen by others or not is a painstaking process it's hard it's difficult and you don't want people critiquing what you write but even you are looking at your work looking at your baby being like fuck you you don't look good you are not my best i could do better that is that that is hard that is very 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 fucking difficult that is all i can say it is so difficult to really understand what an author goes through within writing their books and people kind of disrespecting that isn't a great feeling to be honest so whether your book is mass marketed whether your book is mass produced like i think all works that are being put out for public consumption should at the very least be worth anyone's time you should at the very least have the courtesy and the decency to, you know do it yourself but anyways guys that brings this video to an end i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please hit the like button and if you want to see more of my content please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time i post a new video i post weekly on this channel so don't miss out also if you want to see more of my content um please subscribe uh that what leave me comments down below what you want to see from me what books i should put on my tbr books i should move up my tbr what books what uh videos you want to see from me next topics i should topics i should talk about on my channel i always get really excited when i see you guys' comments it makes me so happy and appreciate it. Anyways, guys, I love my lumas. Bye.